Hey y'all, random Andrew coming at you with a Mini Cooper video today, but you already knew that because you've seen the title. That's why you clicked this. So yeah, we're a bit overdue for uh, a video on the Cooper. I've been trying to think of some things that I wanted to talk with you guys about, about this little beast here. Uh, it was mainly to do with, uh, I guess the video's title probably says that too. I wanted to discuss whether this R50, so R50 2005 Mini Cooper, will ever be a performance car. Now it is not the performance model and because of that there are some things that I found out. I got talking to a fella on Facebook by the name of Jamez and his minis. This guy he's quite knowledge when it comes to these Mini Coopers. That could very well be an understatement in itself. So as we uh, do some work on this very cold day, I mean look, canoe is covered in snow, we had a warm day or two here, and I did not choose to do the work on the car on the warm day. Got a big dirty plow, snow plow, snow, and all the salt, yes, salt. Because salt is so great for cars, right? So as we do some work to the car here today, I'm going to discuss the reasons with you guys. Why? The Cooper. Probably won't ever be a performance car. You know, like, will it? Would it be worth doing these options? I'm not saying that an R50 can't be made a performance Cooper. I'm going to tell you my reasons why, and I think I'll explain the route we're going. But first, let's discuss some of these parts that I've got to do. Put on the car today. As you guys know, I get all my parts through Rock Auto. Most of my parts, anyways. 90% of them. I'm going to see about submitting a couple of pictures of the Cooper. Let's see about getting them on a magnet. Through Rock Auto. I mean, you'd have to buy your parts through Rock Auto to get them. But, I mean, all through COVID... It was like COVID wasn't even there. These guys were able to provide my parts for me. So we should get a hold of them and say, hey, you guys should sponsor Random Andrew. I mean, Rock Auto RA, Random Andrew. I just noticed that. So the parts today. Something that's been missing on my Cooper for a while. And I got off, actually, this one here. Sorry, Rock Auto, but I got this off of Amazon for about the same price by the time shipping was covered. Auto Boo. All right, so this part from Autoboo, it's a rear wiper arm and the blade. Never had one on the car since I bought it. Never really needed one. I don't think I've ever owned a car that's had a rear wiper blade, so it's all new to me. End cap. Don't lose that, otherwise it looks really, really ghetto. Try not to break it. I mean, I picked a nice cold day to work with plastic parts, didn't I? All right, so. Got us a nice clean wiper blade. And then the wiper arm itself. And I'm going to test fit this piece before I go ahead and attach the wiper blade. Oh, that's going to... That's going to be a problem. I don't think we're doing this today, guys. Because this piece... That's gonna be an issue. Okay, so I'm about to show you is that brass piece, it's actually the piece from another one, it looks like an aluminum insert, still on there. Yeah, there is no way that I'm going to be able to fit the other wiper arm over that, and I think it's gotta, you gotta have a puller or something to get that off of there, and then if you look, you gotta be careful you don't pull that right through there, because that's in the glass. Well, I'm not so sure what to say about that. I don't have a puller. So I guess we'll move on to project number two and we'll have to come back to that once I can figure it out and throw it in this video before. But if you don't see it, then you know it didn't happen. And just like that, went and got a two-thirds jaw gear puller. This is actually the smaller of the two sizes they had. Let me move things around here and we'll open that up and have us a look. Uh, it's usually the last side that you look. Where the heck's the opening? There we go. See what I mean? I've already had it out and looked at it. Need all this just to take that one little piece off. 
Now for go trying to figure out how we gotta attach that. Makes sense to get everything we're gonna need on here. And no, the sizes are not in the right spots. And I'm not going to explain why. Just no, nothing's where it should be right now in this box. There we go. Okay. Let's fit this on here. And I'll explain one other quick thing about this pour. This is a giant pane of glass. This is a heavy metal object. Don't let the two meet hard. I mean, if I had the time or the patience, I might even go as far as to take a piece of cardboard and cut out around, poke a hole through, just so that this doesn't accidentally, you know, damage anything. Now, I have not done a heck of a lot of work with pullers. So this is gonna be real interesting. Top one up. Oh yeah, this is gonna be real fun. I'll tell you that right now. Just trying to get this in place and on here. Nice and even. This is, this is not, I'm not having a good time here. I almost feel like going and getting an elastic to put around these arms. I don't seem to want to be grabbing on it now. It just isn't, as it's tightening, it just goes up and around. Okay, so in the end, I couldn't show you guys that awesome polar action. It wasn't really anything fancy, really. So you guys didn't miss much, but I did have to reconfigure these from being mounted in these holes to these holes. Uh, I suppose I could have went with these ones here, but I mean, it's all about was uh, to do with length. I had to re like this had to be lengthened out a bit longer. But when these were up here, they were giving me enough of an edge like these feet that they go to grab on aren't the best but I mean it's better than absolutely nothing and I'll show you what happened to that little piece all right so this guy here the piece that was stuck on is this guy right here can we get a focus hang on Yeah, that's a bit better. Yeah, it actually ended up breaking. It's just cheap aluminum. So let's get out the new part. All right, so the awesome rear wiper arm assembly from Autoboo. It does come with instructions. I don't know where I put them. We don't need instructions. I guess first thing is just to test fit this now that we've got it clean and open. Yeah. And then it's just a pressure fit on there. I don't even actually know if this wiper motor works, folks, but we're gonna find out. And uh, I don't see any reason why we can't just assemble this ahead of time. All right, simple enough, pretty straightforward. This piece goes into here. Make sure you got it all lined up and then just, should be just as easy as that. Look at that. I don't know if I've actually said this or not, folks, but from the day I bought this car, it's never had a rear wiper arm. It looks like it should fit on there a little better than that, but we're gonna give her a go. Better nut than that. 
Oh, much better. Nicest one fits the best. So yeah, the kit, it didn't come with a nut. Doesn't matter, got lots of those. Got lots of those. I figure out, it's gonna sit right about there. So 90 degrees out to the left. I mean, I, I can just change that if I don't like the way it's mounted. Yeah, and you'll need a, uh, a 12 deep. Well, as you tighten it, it's also going to push this on a little bit further. Autoboo also sells, includes, not sells, they include with the kit, so the little end cap, it's got this little cutaway and I was looking at it thinking, what would that be for? That's so that the sprayer can spray. So make sure we're putting it on here right and it clips on properly. Simple enough, doesn't look too bad. I guess uh, I'll start up the car and we'll give it a test. Well, we could either wait till another video to tear it apart and see what's wrong, or I can go all nuts and just order a new one. Let's see. Let's let's have a look at something here. We're not done yet. Yeah. So the wiper motor is gonna sit underneath this module, or oh, this plastic here. I suppose it's like what six, nine bolts, something like that. Screws, not bolts. I'm gonna zip those out real quick. And then we're gonna have us a look and see what's going on under here. I don't know if we can fix it today. Well, we can try and give it the good old Russian fix. I'll explain in a minute. So I ended up pulling a couple more screws than I actually needed to, but yeah, hey, it's all right. That's all right. Here's the motor. Hmm, everything's hooked up. Doesn't look like there's any severe corrosion around the wiring. Checking all the plugs. And check this out. This is what I meant by my Russian fix, okay? And any friends who happen to live in the Soviet area, don't be offended. Because this trick works. I mean, it, it worked on my window. My window motor was a bit sticky and it just stopped working. I gave the door a whack in exactly the spot they said to do it. It was fixed. So, I'll show you. We'll, we'll do this together. All right. Here we go. You can see the motor right here. And there's gears over here. It's aluminum casing on this uh, here, so I'm not going to hit that hard. But the motor, as long as you don't hit it hard enough to dent the casing, just free up them brushes. The way these motors work, there's magnets around the outside. Or magnets on the impeller and the electromagnet sends power to it. Sometimes that just sticks once in a while. It gets a little sticky. You have to free it up, that's all. Alright, we'll give this a shot. Oh, you leave it open. I should check my phone. Well, it doesn't appear our little Soviet trick is going to do the fix today. That's too bad, you know? But I mean, it's going to be pretty easy to change. It's made in France. 
It's too bad if I could just get this motor, but it does actually look like it's all part of the same unit right here. So I'm probably going to have to order the whole thing. Let me just get a replacement motor. I'll tear this one apart and see what's wrong with it and then have a spare. Yeah? Is that a positive way of thinking? Yeah, I think so. What's this? Except for the rear window heater, I wonder. Does it say on it? Well, oh, let's find out together. Well, it's made in Germany. I don't know. I'm gonna go ahead and guess that's for the window heater because we got wires coming in like a supply. And then we got wires coming out and going up there. You know, I put this all back together and then I'll show you guys once it's back together. But you want a quick closer look at how it all fits together. See these little slots right here? There's some here. Uh, there's another one over here. Oh yeah, see this one's actually got its a little grommet in it. Because that's a different thing. Never mind, don't look at that. And this one here. Those clips. Now if you look here, here are the corresponding parts. And that's where that one metal clip is. And there's like, there's a ton of them. So once you get it all lined up, they do all fit together. Should clean that up. We're gonna take this whole thing apart, plastic and everything, and clean it all up underneath. Yeah, and this is the insulation, sound bending insulation. You can see how much dirt and dust does actually get back and in here. But I'm not taking care of that today because I'm just gonna put it all back together and then I'm gonna go look up how much a new wiper motor is gonna cost. Yeah, it's all back. Take two. It's all back together. Everything's nice and Secure, hopefully nothing rattles. That motor is getting replaced soon enough. Tools are all, for the most part, cleaned up. In case you ever wondering, these are foam blocks for a uh, mountain canoe on top of your car. Still iffy on if I want to even use them on the Mini. You know, be one of those big old canoes on top of this thing without a proper roof rack. It's questionable. I'm gonna return you guys to what I was already filming. We'll get on with the rest of the fixes now that that's done. Project number two is gonna have us not needing to do what I'm about to do. Yes, that's a garden tool. Got these guys off Rock Auto. Here's my new hood struts. These will make it so we don't have to hold the hood open with a garden tool anymore. But I mean, it works in a pinch. I'm not knocking it. They're just, these should be just as simple as popping off and popping on. But it doesn't look that way. Oh, why don't I, why don't I ever look these things over before I start showing you guys? First up, let's move you guys around and show you what I got to do to get those off of it. It should be as simple as just popping them off. I don't know if you guys are in focus or not, but there's this little tab right here. This is a round guy. It's just a spring. I mean, you pop it off, you pop it back on. And just like that, you should do the same on the bottom. Get under it. This is a flat screwdriver or something. Just like that. There you go, just like that. It's off. Take note when you're doing these which end is which. So, mine, I've got the non hydraulic end. Ah, I'm just making a mess here. I've got the non hydraulic end on the bottom, thicker end on top. Here's a nice fancy unit, new unit. Just as simple as that, it pops on the bottom. Just spin, put the screwdriver down. Okay, so for this one, I'm obviously gonna have to open the hood a little bit more. I think I'm gonna wait till I get the other side ready to go or find a better spot to open this. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. If I just prop this open a bit further here, it might buy me the room I need. 
Yeah, heck it. Let's just do it this way. Wiggle it around. Make sure it attaches really good. Okay. That is one side done. Leaving this in place just to give a little extra support until we get the other side done. All right, now this side should be just as just as simple. I shouldn't say this out loud. I'm I'm laughing because I'm gonna jinx myself. But it should be just as easy as the first side. Pop that clamp off there. Here's a little tip too. If you are worried about scratching paint anything like that. I'm not worried about it because why would you want to scratch your paint? So I'm just not going to scratch my paint. But you know, put on a cloth or something so as you're prying if something happens to go bad you know like uh, if you slip or if you pry against the wrong spot on the back of your screwdriver. By the way one of these don't hurt either. Uh, then you got a cloth there protecting your beautiful paint. Another good little tip that I could give you guys is when you're putting these on, they go on like a, a little ball, pivot ball mount here. It wouldn't hurt to throw some grease on them. I don't have any grease at this moment, so I'm not, but it's just that easy to come back along, pop these little tabs out, pop the thing off, put the grease on, put it all back together. And you know what I haven't been doing this whole time? Explain to you guys about my doubts on why this R50 or an R50 should be used for a performance vehicle. Uh oh Almost lost the old prop right. I'll tell you right now, the reason why I'm having my doubts about my particular R50 2005 Mini Cooper is because of my transmission. I, I got I have, underneath here, continuously variable transmission. And there was actually a class action lawsuit between owners and BMW over that uh, transmission. So look it up, just type lawsuit BMW CVT, and I'm sure you'll have lots to read. Uh, long story short, they can only take so much power. And when you have the non-S, you have the W10, not the W11. This engine here, it doesn't have forged internals. Okay, these are just your plain Jane stock internals. You get the Cooper S, it's a boosted engine. So you've got forged internals, right? Yeah, that's, that's my thoughts. So the thing is, I could drop a six speed in this, sure. I found somebody down the Hamilton area, you know who you are if you're watching, who gave me a decent quote on doing the work and that's like everything that needs to be done. I, I drop my car off, I pick it up, it's a six speed or a five speed, uh, depending on what choices. Now there's choices there, but that's not what we're talking about. This is what we're talking about. This is what it comes down to. If I'm going to go through the trouble to get me a donor car that's going to have the transmission and everything I need to do the swap, then I'm also gonna ha run into the problem with the engine, not having forged internals. Plus it doesn't have the oil squirters under the pistons for effective cooling while boosting. So what it comes down to is, I'm gonna take really good care of this. These cars, the R50s have less problems in the long run when it comes to maintenance and all that as compared to the Cooper S's. Cooper S's, I guess, you know, being a sportier car, maybe it's under more stress. I really don't know. But what I do know is, this little thing gets great mileage. All right, I got a low battery warning here. I was so impressed when I drove up to my buddy Terry's and this thing got the mileage that it did going there and back. All right then, here we go. We're gonna test these hood rods, prop rods. Take the old weed puller out, okay? The weed puller has hit the ground. Look at that. Oh, that is, that's nice. I don't have to have anything holding the hood open. Watch this, watch this. Actually, I have to pull the hood down. Okay. And then. Oh, that is nice. I like that. Oh, geez. 
And it's an easy job to do. There's no reason why you should be taking your Cooper to a BMW dealership, paying them whatever in labor. Don't get me wrong, dealership guys. You have your reason, your purpose for being there. There's a lot of jobs that you guys will have to take your, your Mini Cooper to a dealership to do because you just can't do it at home. And that's why those guys are there. But for something like this, you do not need a dealership. That being said about the dealership, there are also guys like Jamez and his minis out there who has a lot of parts for the earlier uh, Mini Coopers like the R50 or the R53. I'm pretty sure he does deal in the other stuff too. And because I've mentioned him so much, I'm going to get a hold of him later on and ask, hey, give me a link where you would want people to go to get a hold of you about Mini Coopers. And I don't mean like just asking them simple questions i mean if you need parts and you're having trouble finding it for this era of cooper 100 percent chance he's got it Whew. so on to what i was saying about the performance things there's a few things i'd like to do even though the car is never going to see a lot of power but i think it would be very cool to do this on the channel and share the how-to with you guys start out maybe a simple cold air intake off the throttle body and just up and over into this area or figure that out and then improvements upon that over time how we can run it down to sit somewhere in here i don't know i've seen a lot of great ideas out there I and put a few of those ideas together we could come up with something really awesome as well hopefully we could film this before the camera dies i'm looking at the exhaust manifold that actually looks like a header on the four into one header but it's got a flex pipe down there and you get down underneath, here is okay, this end of it's okay, but when you get down towards the catalytic, it's it's rough. I can't even undo the O2 sensor, the post-catalytic O2. Like I said before, when I was talking about doing it, that post-catalytic O2 is probably the original one, just like the before the pre-catalytic O2 sensor. If you don't know, usually on these modern engines, there's two, if not more, O2 sensors. One taking a reading before, it passes through the catalytic converter and one reading after and it compares those two readings to know how your fuel burn is and adjust your computer accordingly to give you the best uh, the best ratio for air to fuel giving you mileage giving you performance or whatever it happens to be dialed in for in this case this little sucker here will actually limit your throttle body movement even if you put your pedal to the floor from a dead stop to give you the most e efficient acceleration and mileage possible. Now, if you get into the brain of this thing, you can change all that through uh, rewriting in the computer, the, um, the ECU essentially, the electronic control unit, the brain. You can also get a little module that'll hook up between, like your, your pedals all drive by wire in this, right? So your gas pedal, your throttle pedal, hooks up with a plug, a harness. And you get a module that hooks up between that harness and they'll let you change that too. A lot simpler. Other mods I'd like to do on the channel if I had the funds. If you want to support me and see these modifications happen sooner, check out my Patreon account. Patreon page, I haven't done much with it because there's been no attention to the page. It gets some attention and I, I will be updating it regularly. Patrons are people who can help support the channel because we're not really making anything on YouTube right now. If you look at my views, maybe someday I'll do a monetization thing and show you guys literally pennies a day. But it's free money, the way I look at it at this point. Free pennies because I love doing these videos. I love reaching out and connecting with you guys and being able to read the comments, especially on a lot of those uh, Highway Through Cemetery videos. Very cool interaction. Very cool to hear back from family members whose ancestors are in those cemeteries. Very awesome. So long story short, if you want to help support me, help support little projects that we can use towards making content on the channel, the Patreon support will also go towards funding trips. Uh, there's a trip that I'm personally going to be funding out of my own pocket because it's something I want to do. And I'm going to get into that in another video, but you guys will be coming with me regardless. It doesn't matter. You're coming with me. And we're going to do it in this car. So that means we've got a lot of things to do before we can do that trip. And here's your teaser where that trip is. One Mini Cooper, one random me, all the way 
to Lance O. Meadows. If you know my Viking, my Norse heritage, you'll know why I gotta go there. Anyways, I've said way too much. This is supposed to be a Mini Cooper video. So thank you guys for watching this video of changing the hood struts. Something that really needed to be done. You know, it takes a couple minutes. Didn't need any special tools. If you enjoyed today's video, please click like. Make sure you're subscribed. Uh, my my uh, analytics show me that a lot of you people who watch these videos aren't even subscribed yet. So do me a solid, hit that subscribe. Click the little bell next to it so you know when I get new content posted for you guys. And uh, yeah, other than that, share the videos. Find those Mini Cooper forums, find those Mini Cooper pages. Share the Cooper videos. If you like the graveyard series videos, the tours, the cemetery tours videos, share them around too. They need some love. Talk to you guys later. I've talked enough. It's cold out here. Goodbye.